Hello and welcome to Cole Red Plays Raid Shadow Legends. I am Cole Red. Thank you for joining me. So as you can see from the icon floating there above the portal, White Queen Ancora is in the game and her fragment event is live. Now, Plarium has stopped releasing the calendar for these events ahead of time. Clearly, they don't want us planning ahead of time and saving and getting these fragment champions or fusion champions with saved resources. They would much rather that we spend money in order to complete these events. It's really frustrating, and as a free-to-play player, that means it's incredibly important on the first day of any fusion or fragment event to go and take a look at the calendar and plan my way forward. There's always some pitfalls in every fragment event or fusion event, and I need to know where those are and also judge what kind of resources it's going to take to be successful. So that's what we're going to do today. I am definitely going for White Queen and Korra on my main account, and so I'm going to assess the calendar and make my fusion plan Share that with you in the hopes that it may help you plan your event or maybe even help you decide whether or not you really want to go for this champion. Okay, I hope you're ready for it. Let's get started. Just a quick reminder, I have launched a second YouTube channel. It is called Cole Red Plays. The Cole Red Plays Raid Shadow Legends channel will still be my primary focus. But that is more of a variety channel. So if you are looking for some gameplay on other games other than Raid Shadow Legends, you can come check us out. We are currently playing Pal World and in fact, we'll be streaming later today. So if that's interesting to you, please check out the new channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button for this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and consider joining our Discord community. Thanks so much. Now let's get to the video. Okay, so as you may or may not know, I am not part of the content creator program. I've applied twice now. I've never heard back, so I don't know what's going to happen with that. But that means I don't have access to the test server. As a result, this is the first time I'm actually seeing the stats for White Queen and Korra. And I noticed something really interesting. First of all, she's fairly tanky, almost 21k HP and 1200 defense. She's also very fast at 111 speed. So outside of Mythics, she is one of the fastest champions in the game. That is, I think, the second or third fastest speed that you see um, for non-mythic champions. Very fast, faster than Arbiter, which is great. She also has 40 resist in her kit, which is really nice. But I was looking at this, and I noticed something, and I was thinking to myself, that's a relatively tanky support. I wonder about some other supports. And I came across something which is kind of interesting. I don't know how Clarion comes up with their formulas for these stats for different champions. But I wanted to show you this. If you stay in the same faction and look over here at Teodor, 2805, that's the same HP, 980 is the same attack, and 1211 is the exact same defense. So Ancora and Teodor have the exact same top three stats. Now, Teodor is slower, he doesn't have as much resist, he has some accuracy, so they are different a little bit. But it's really interesting to see a champion with the exact same three top stats as another champion, even in the same faction, and also another legendary support. So we know that Teodor is relatively tanky. He can actually solo content. And so we know that Ancora is going to be relatively tanky, which is great because she needs to be for her role. I just thought that was interesting and I wanted to share that. But now let's go look at the calendar. Okay, and so I do want to talk about this fragment count because it says that there are 130 fragments and it says that there are also 20 from leaderboards. Now, this always bothers me. This is not the first time they've done this. This has been like this for a while. But if you look at the two events, the two tournaments rather, that have extra fragments, it says that there are 10 in the champion training and there are 10 in the champion chase. Now, here's the thing. No one can get 10 fragments from either of these tournaments. The way that the fragments are split up is the top two finishers get five fragments each. So what that means is there aren't really 20 fragments available from the tournament leaderboards, and there is no way to get 130 fragments. Instead, there are 10 that are available here to any one player, and that means there is a total of 120 fragments available to any one player. So even if you win these tournaments, you're only getting a 20 fragment, or you're only getting a 10 fragment cushion, even if you win both tournaments. Now, generally, especially as a free-to-play player, I don't plan to even get five fragments from any of these tournaments so i want to make my plan based on the calculation of the fragments without those tournament fragments in the mix okay so the first thing that we want to look at is the shard event we always take a look at those first so we have the summon rush here that will start tomorrow on friday and then we have the champion chase which happens next week now 
we always want to look at this because shards are the rarest of resources in terms of any of the events or tournaments that you're doing for a fragment event. So for instance, everything else just comes down to energy or silver usually, right? But these events actually require shards. So the way that these two have been happening in, as long as I can remember really, is that there are two prize points. There are two like rewards. You're going to get five fragments for a lower point number, and then you're going to get 10 fragments for a higher point number. And that's going to be the same for the summon rush and the champion chase tournament. So for the summon rush, basically you need shards. You can't get away from that. You need shards. And typically we're looking at 3,150 points for all 15 shards. That's what we've seen in the past. We won't know until tomorrow whether they've changed that, lowered it, or raised it. But 3,150 realistically means at least five sacreds, maybe six sacreds for 3,000 points, and then some mystery shards or ancient shards or whatever you have on top of that. Now, the thing to consider about the Champion Chase Tournament is this will be a two times weekend. I don't know what the two times is going to be. I assume it's not going to be sacreds because we just had sacreds go by. Now, before that, we had voids, and the voids were out of order. So usually voids follow sacreds. So if you look at the HH site, it says voids because we just had sacreds, so it should be sacreds, then voids. But we haven't had ancients in six weeks now. So I suspect they may just mess up the order again and go right to ancients. So hopefully you have some ancient shards and you have some void shards. The other thing to consider here is that you can get champion chase points from other fragment champions that you summon. So if you have Doom Tower champions or past fragment event champions waiting in your portal, you want to hold on to them for the champion chase. You can also do the fusions, whether you know that's like the Razen fusion or the Lady Mikage fusion or any of those fusion champions would also get you champion chase points. So that is something to consider. The champion chase tournament for that reason can be easier for some players, but if you don't have any fragment champions sitting around, then you have to pull shards or, you know, you'll get some points for grinding campaign. Because champions do drop from campaign. Also, check your logins to make sure that you may or may not get a login reward champion during that champion chase tournament. Okay, now with 30 fragments available here, and we know that it goes 5 and 10, that means you can skip one of these tournaments halfway. You can not go after the second chunk of fragments, the second batch of fragments in one of these, um, but you still have to get at least five fragments from both of these. So if you don't have the shards for these, or if you don't have the champions saved in your portal that could get you the points, you may have to skip this fragment event. That's just the way it goes. These are the hardest to complete if you haven't already saved for them if you didn't know it was coming you didn't you weren't prepared and you didn't save you can't really force it without spending money now if you're a spender that frees you up a little bit you can always buy shard packs if you want um one thing to consider is that i like to do ancient shards for champion chases i like to do sacreds for summon rushes and i just hold on to my voids for two times event that's what i do as a free-to-play player and that seems to work out pretty well and that would work out especially well this time around if the champion chase tournament happens during a two times ancient. Now, again, we don't know. It could be a two times void, and that's fine because I'll pull my voids as well. So definitely hold on to your ancients and voids for the champion chase when you can and try to get the summon rush done with sacred shards. Now, if you decide to go the route of skipping 10 of the points from one of these two events, that means you need to complete every single other event and tournament here, including the hero's path. And we don't know what kind of hero's path we're going to get. Remember, the points from Hero's Path, sometimes it's like another Champion Chase or Summon Rush. So they could even throw a third shard event in here with the Hero's Path. You will need to get all 15 points from the Hero's Path if you skip 10 on the Summon Rush or the Champion Chase. And that's really tricky because we have no idea where the points are going to be coming from. So this is probably the hardest to plan Fragment Event Calendar I've ever seen because we have absolutely zero information about the hero's path point system, but we know we're going to need at least five points from that hero's path, if not all 15. Okay, so that is basically the scenario if you don't have the shards. I would highly recommend that if you don't have the shards, this could potentially be one fragment event you skip, 
because you don't want to invest, get all the way to Thursday, check out the hero's path and realize it's another summoning event. I also hesitate to recommend to anybody not to complete this fusion because I do think she's a good fusion and you always have the chance of pulling her duo from a void shard in the future, which would be phenomenally powerful. I think the duo is going to be very, very good. I think they're S tier, maybe even God tier arena duo. Um, and so we'll have to see how that plays out in the future. If you have the resources, what I would highly recommend is to do what I am doing, which is I'm going to complete the summon rush and the champion chase in their entirety. And that will leave me 10 fragments to spare somewhere else. That may mean I don't have to go after the last five fragments or 10 fragments in the hero's path. Or if the hero's path is relatively easy, what I can do is end up skipping the artifact enhancement events. And that's likely what I'm gonna do because silver is always my biggest barrier. I can usually do the champion training tournaments okay. The actual dungeon tournaments aren't really problematic. Um, and you know the champion training can be a little bit tricky, but as you'll notice, there is actually only one champion training tournament in this entire fragment event. Now that's really unusual. We've actually had three in most of the events over the past several months. So this alleviates some of the pressure in terms of champion training, but it also reduces some opportunities for double or triple dipping, right? Because if you have a dungeon team that can solo or duo a dungeon, then you could potentially put food in there and get extra value for your energy. So while I like the fact that champion training is not here, um, you know, too many times, it is still something that you have to consider as an adjustment for this particular calendar. One thing to note is there's a champion training tournament actually ongoing that is currently still going that was part of like, you know, the, the previous events prior to the Ancora event dropping. And so that actually doesn't end until tomorrow, I think late tonight. So that actually ends here. And then you'll probably get 24 hours and then you'll have another champion training tournament going. So depending on your resources, you can decide if you want to bail out of that champion training early because you know you're going to have to do another one or if you have enough resources to cover them both. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and give you a rundown of the various places where you can get double dips and triple dips and where you want to watch out for rough spots and pitfalls. So the Fire Knight tournament doesn't overlap the Dungeon Divers event until tomorrow, so I would hold off on the Fire Knight today. Don't do any Fire Knight. Uh, likewise, if you can get some champion training into the Fire Knight and the Spider Tournament, this is 100% overlapped with those two tournaments. Those are the two harder dungeons to actually solo, right? It's very difficult to solo those two. So probably you're going to have to do maybe a trio. You could, or maybe if you're lucky, you could duo them. So if you have a trio for Fire Knight or a trio for Spider Tournament, then you could get a little champion training double dip going on there with some food. For me, that's going to be tricky. I think maybe I have a trio for Spider, but I don't think I have a, even a trio for Fire Knight, so I might even have to do like a four-man team and just get a little bit of food in there. Now, the Dungeon Divers is going to be completely covered by the Spider Tournament as well, so you're probably going to want to do all 2K of the Spider Tournament on the front half so that you can get it in there into the Dungeon Divers and do the full 2K of the Fire Knight at that point. And that'll give you four out of the 5K that you need for Dungeon Divers, meaning you have the 4K covered in here, and then you just need to add 1K energy at some other point. You know, you could maybe keep doing it during the Spider Tournament to get more silver because that tends to be the best place for silver. Now, once you get into the Artifact Enhancement, that's fine because you've already gotten two tournaments done. And that this first Artifact Enhancement for me is the one that I'm absolutely going to do. Remember, I don't know what the hero's path is going to look like. And so this artifact enhancement event, I have to do blind. And so I'm just going to go ahead and complete it. Now, the Dungeon Divers event two is actually kind of in a rough spot. It doesn't really overlap with anything except this spider tournament. So the problem with the spider tournament, of course, is it's going to be completed during the first Dungeon Divers. And so this is just a straight up 5K. It doesn't overlap with anything if you've used up the spider energy, right? It doesn't overlap with the champion training and it's going to end the same time this dragon tournament starts. So it doesn't overlap with that dragon tournament. That's incredibly unfriendly. That means you just have to burn 5,000 energy somewhere in order to get this dungeon divers. 
What I would recommend, again, is sticking in this spider tournament. That's my plan. This spider tournament is going to be crazy. Everybody's going to be basically throwing 7,000 energy into this spider tournament. The totals are going to be super high, but at least you'll get all the rewards there for that. And then maybe you've got a chance to actually win it if other people don't go as hard at the spider tournament. So we're looking at 7K in the spider tournament, only 2K of which gets double dipped into this dungeon divers on the first half of the of the calendar okay so now once we get to that part that means we're going to have a ton of silver for this artifact enhancement event number two and so we're probably going to burn through that no problem um it's rare that we get that lucky or lucky i don't even it's not lucky it's rare that we have that much silver produced you know during a fragment event but in this case i think these two artifact enhancements are going to go away now i will say hold off until the hero's path starts don't start this second artifact enhancement event at the beginning make sure that you don't right because it's possible that there will be heroes path points from either acquiring artifacts or from leveling up artifacts there may be so if this artifact enhancement overlaps with the hero's path i don't expect it to by the way i don't expect it to i think it's going to be something else um but if it does then you want to get full value so do not waste your silver on the front end of this artifact enhancement event Likewise, once the hero's path hits, you want to make sure that if, you know, there are tournaments or artifact acquisition that you're doing the dragon tournament overlapping with the hero's path. Now, the classic arena tournament, uh, I'm sorry, classic arena takedowns, those are going to be easy enough. You just need to do your normal everyday kind of farming. If you're in low silver, you're going to have to probably spend a few gems and some extra time on the classic arena takedowns, but it's not overwhelming. Usually you can do that as long as you're at least in like silver two or so, um, you can probably do this. You just have to focus on it. Now we can't get any overlap here with dragon tournament and ice golem really, but if those happen to overlap with the hero's path, we do want to get all of those points inside of the hero's path. So try to get your ice golem done in this window here. If, in fact, we can get points from artifact acquisition. Um, if it's a hero's path that requires shard pulling, then the champion chase becomes a shard pull, becomes a summon rush, basically. And you can't use as many of your stored fragment champions as you might like. And I'm afraid that that is what's actually going to happen. Remember, this is during a two times weekend. I feel like this is going to be a hero's path that requires shards. That's just my feeling. We don't know 100%. As soon as it drops, you want to check it. If you have to bail out, this is the point where you want to, you know, unfortunately, it's going to be late, but this is the point where you want to bail out and don't waste the energy. Don't waste, you know, the champion chase points. Don't worry about the silver for the artifact enhancement and save yourself a little bit of resources. Unfortunately, that's what we're looking at right now. Or if you feel like, yeah, I've got enough resources no matter what, even if the hero's path requires shards, because I can just double dip with the champion chase then there's at least that at least you'll be getting points from the hero's path and the champion chase and the two times event whichever one it happens to be okay the final ice golem tournament is just another 2000 energy and so what it looks like in terms of energy here is that we're going to be doing five for this we're going to be doing five for this and we're going to be doing four for these so in terms of the overall energy requirement it's actually not that high it looks like probably we're going to be okay with somewhere around sixteen thousand energy maybe a little bit more now i want to mention this because in past fusion like planning videos people thought oh you need sixteen thousand energy you need to have that saved up you don't remember that passively you probably get close to a thousand energy a day right you get your 480 like passive regen, you get all of your daily quests, you get your advanced quests, you get your playtime rewards, you even get like the free packs every other day, you get uh, a energy refill. So if you have saved, you know, 10 refill pots or maybe 20 refill pots, you're going to hit this number just fine as long as you use your energy efficiently. Likewise, for silver, we're going to be looking at about 60 million silver. But you'll probably pick up at least half of that during the event. So I usually, as long as I have 20 million silver, I feel really comfortable as a starting point. You don't need to have saved 60 million silver, but you'll probably 
like 60 million silver would be towards the ceiling. You might get lucky and do it for like 45 or 50. But remember, there are three artifact enhancement events and they roughly take 15 to 20 million silver per. So it's a good time to do a gear cleanse, right? Get some extra silver, maybe use the forge. And again, that's another reason to spend more energy in the spider tournament. I actually think because of that, the burden on silver will be a little bit less for this event than it has been in the past. And then finally, in terms of gems, you know, I always like to have at least 2000 gems saved for this in case I need more energy or more silver or what have you. So I usually like that, but that's not necessarily required if you have all of these other things. So again, remember your probably six, um, six sacreds down here for the summon rush. Sorry, that should be six sacreds. And then for your champion chase, I don't know if it's a two times event in Ancients, it's going to be different, but I usually like to save somewhere in the vicinity of 80 Ancients for these champion chase tournaments, plus any points you can get from any fusion champions or fragments. Okay, so I know that this is a complete mess now. It looks crazy, but I hope that was helpful. Um, I do feel like we have a decent success chance at this as long as the hero's path either lines up perfectly with a champion chase. So remember, this first part of the hero's path don't do it until you see what requirements it has, right? And if it lines up with the dragon tournament, if it lines up with the champion chase, um, or if it lines up with, you know, even arena, I don't know, wh wherever the points come from, see if you can double dip, triple dip. If it lines up with the artifact enhancement, hold out on all of those events that overlap the hero's path until you actually see the point requirements for the hero's path. And that'll help you plan the second half of the fusion. Now, the fusion is not that long this year. It's, uh, or this month, it's 14 days. And, you know, it is a full 14 days, obviously, because it's a fragment event. So you don't need the extra days at the end in order to like level everything up and fuse it. So it's just the 14 days and done. Okay, that is it for this fusion planning session. Let me know in the comments below will you be going for White Queen and Korra? Has this helped you decide yes or no? And what do you think about this calendar? Is it friendly? Is it unfriendly? What's the worst part of it? It's a little bit weird, isn't it? All right, so that is it for me. Thank you so much for hanging out. I have been Cole Red, and I will see you in another video soon.